In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a common method bias test in Smart PLS 4 using a random dependent variable. This is actually the preferred method for the collinearity approach. Thank you so much to Christian Buzetta for pointing this out. So, how do we do this? Well, first we need to update the dataset to include a random variable. If you have the dataset in a useful format, such as CSV or SAV, then you can go edit that directly. I'm going to do this the hard way, just in case others are in the same situation I am. If I go back here and I look at my three datasets, this one right here is the one I want to update, but I can't export it, and it's not in a friendly file format. So how do we find it? We check out our workspace. Here's my workspace right here, users, jgask, and documents, smart PLS4. I'm going to go there by opening up an Explorer window. And again, I put mine in Documents. And then down here in Smart PLS 4, I have my YouTube tutorials. And it is in here somewhere. If I sort by type, I can see the TXT documents. Here is my data set right here. If I just double click this, it's a mess and I can't really do much with it. What I need to do is open that up in Excel. So let me go open Excel and I'm going to click on open and browse. And I'm in documents. That should be the default. I'll go find Smart PLS 4 right here and YouTube tutorials. Now you'll want to find wherever you put your workspace. It's probably not in the exact same place I put mine. Notice nothing shows up when I want to open a file. It's because it's only looking for Excel files. I need to click on this drop down and say, look for text files. Ah, here are the text files. OK, this is the one I want right here in the middle. Hit open. And then it brings up this little dialog box to figure out how to import the data. We're going to say that it is delimited, then click Next. And it's delimited by semicolon. You can uncheck tab if you like. Once you've checked semicolon, you should see it down here splitting up your data. Hit Finish. Should open up very nicely. We're going to go to the end and just add a random variable. So I'm going to call this random and then use the function equals rand parentheses, nothing in them. Again, it's just equals rand with parentheses. And then I'll double click on the little handle here to drop it all the way down. And now I have a random number as a new variable. Next, very important step, save, then close. If you don't do this, it will have trouble in Smart PLS because it'll be open in multiple places. OK, back in Smart PLS, double click on that data set and then go to Setup. And you'll see it down here at the bottom now, right here, random, hit Update. All right, now it should show up down at the bottom here. Yes, here it is. Excellent. Next step, we're going to go create our model. So to do this, I'm just going to copy one of my models. Let's see, copy, and then I'll right click anywhere and hit paste. And I'll rename this CMB. Then I'll double click it to open. And here's that model. What I need to do is remove all the structural paths here, the inner paths, and then create regressions against the random variable. So I'm going to do that in fast forward. OK, they're all over there now. I'm going to add the random variable, just drag that out, hit enter, and then I will connect all of these. OK, that is our model. Next, I just calculate the regular old PLS algorithm. Start. And I'm going to look at the report at the VIFs, that's in collinearity statistics. And I want to look at the inner model. Here's the random column, and we're looking for values that are less than or equal to 3.3. If they are, it'll turn them green. Looks like we're doing good. So our data is not exhibiting any concerning signs of method bias. And that's it. What I would report is these VIFs against a random dependent variable. And we're ready to move on.